us, now that the bell has rung, we should be seated and ready for our lesson. Today we will be learning about Edgar Allan Poe and the Dark Romanticism Movement. How many of you know who Edgar Allan Poe is? Alright. Are you guys familiar with some of his writings? Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, we'll be learning about him, who he was, and a few of his stories, too. So, our purpose for today is that we will be learning about him and his stories to see how writing from over 170 years ago can still relate to us today. Um, also, our previous lessons have talked about various movements such as transcendentalism, modernism, and other movements. So we will be learning about this movement in addition to the ones we've already learned about. Um, in his works, you'll discover a lot of symbolism, and so we'll learn about that as well. And lastly, we will learn about his background so that we can see why he writes the way that he does and how that fits into dark romanticism. Okay, so we're going to watch a short video about who Edgar Allan Poe was. of the macabre. He wrote horror, he wrote poetry, criticism, fiction, mystery. He was a master of suspense. Edgar Allan Poe, called by many the father of the detective story, was born on January 19, 1809, in Boston, Massachusetts. When Poe was two years old, his mother passed away, and his father had already abandoned the family. He was taken in as a foster child by the Allen family. He was writing poetry from about the time that he was 13. He kept writing all the time. He worked very, very hard at his writing and wrote constantly. In 1826, Poe enrolled at the University of Virginia. He went into debt. He gambled to try to pay off those debts and found himself in even greater debt and ultimately had to withdraw from the university. In 1830, Poe enrolled at West Point. After West Point, Poe turned to writing full time and lived in a number of East Coast cities before settling down in Richmond, Virginia. Edgar Allan Poe secretly married his 13-year-old cousin and then in 1836 publicly married her in a more open ceremony. He loved her very, very much. They lived together always until, alas, she died of tuberculosis when she was, I guess, around 20. Poe's primary occupation as a writer was as a literary critic. He worked at several newspapers and literary magazines, and he had quite a reputation for being a harsh critic. One of his editors called him the Tomahawk Man. During his lifetime, he barely made a living from his writing. Poe published some of his most famous short stories in his 1840 collection, Tales of the Grotesque and Arabesque. He wrote some of his stories using the first person and talking about the use of opium, so people assumed that he dabbled in drugs. The stories were so creepy, they were ghost stories taken to such a brilliant extreme that people thought he had to be a little strange himself. Poe invented detective fiction when he wrote The Murders in the Rue Morgue in 1841. Murders in the Rue Morgue really deserves to be called the first detective story. It started the whole tradition of detective fiction. The Raven, which was published in 1845, was his huge breakthrough. It became a big bestseller. Poe's career very much went up and down until he really hit the Raven. And that poem was known by, you know, <laughs> it seems everyone in the world that had an enormous press. On October 7, 1849, Edgar Allan Poe died at the age of 40 under mysterious circumstances. Poe's death may be one of the most bizarre things about his life. He left Virginia on his way to New York disappeared. A week later, he was found on the streets of Baltimore. We don't have a single piece of information about what he was doing. At the end of that week, he was found in a tavern, ill, drunk, and was taken to a hospital. It turned out he was wearing clothes that didn't belong to him, and a couple of days later, he died in a delirium. Nobody knows exactly what killed him. Okay, so now that we have seen that video, what stood out to you about Poe? I thought it was interesting that he had such strange writings and like kind of dark and people assume that he had kind of stuff wrong with him since he wrote such weird things. Mm -hmm. Right. And you'll see some of the 
aspects that they talked about in his stories too. Anyone else? Emily? Going off of what Annie says, um, it, those stories seem so strange then, but now we have shows like Criminal Minds and Bones, and it's completely normal to watch those. Right, and one thing about each movement is you'll see like a progression of like something new is added, and so the first writer is often like misunderstood. So maybe that's what Poe was. Maybe if he wrote today, he wouldn't be as misunderstood. Rachel? Um, not really with his writing, but I didn't know that he was American. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so, yeah, Annie. It was also interesting that he had such, like, strange and, I don't know, like, scary kind of writings, and then he had a weird death. So, like, yeah, I wonder if that had anything to do with it. Yeah, and they mentioned drugs and alcohol, and maybe that plays into it, too. Good observation. So, you'll see a lot of the things that they talked about in these two works. Here's the Telltale Heart, which we'll be reading. But the story was written, written in 1843, and it follows an agonized protagonist. So you'll see a lot of that with Poe in his writings, too. But you'll see a lot of paranoia and mental deterioration and, like, the struggle of sanity versus madness. And that's just a little short story that we're going to read. Um, and then the other one we're going to look at is The Raven. And that was written two years later. And whenever he wrote this, that 13-year-old wife was deathly ill, which also was a really weird thing. His cousin, another weird thing about him. But um, you'll see how he borrowed a lot of his works from Dickens and Browning, because we've talked about those in the previous classes and their movements that they did. Um, this was an immediate hit that made him a celebrity, but like they said in the video, he was still a really poor person, and his writing didn't really get him anywhere. But... Is he's famous today, and everyone really kind of knows who he is. Um, and then there's a gothic setting in this story, which is common with his, and then, again, that agonized narrator. Does anyone know what that means? Okay. We'll discuss that afterwards, and you'll, maybe you can make predictions about it. But, so, these works were a part of dark romanticism, but first we'll talk about what romanticism is. So this was a period of writing between 1800 to 1850, and you might want to take notes, but we'll be talking about this throughout the story, but um, this writing appreciates, appreciates beauties in nature, emotion over reason, and senses over intellect. And they really emphasize the individual and the irrational and the imaginative and what the personal um, story is that these people go through, and it's emotional and visionary and transcendental and all these different things that we'll talk about. But this period of Romanticism was a time of a turning point onto the self, the passions, and the inner struggles, which again, we'll see in the two stories that we read. But now that we know a little bit about what these are, we're also gonna look into what dark Romanticism is. Does everyone have their notes down? Yes, okay, I'll go on to dark Romanticism. So this is a literary subgenre of Romanticism. Really, it just added this dark term that we'll be discussing. But um, this emerged from the Transcendental Movement that we talked about a couple class periods ago. But this Romantic writing is less optimistic and focuses, focuses on that irrational. It's kind of demonic and grotesque and still incorporates, though, that beauty in nature that emotion over reason and the sense over intellect that we talked about in the romantic. Um, you'll find that the stories have a focus on the world as a dark and decaying and mysterious place. And one of the big themes is that the truth is evil and hellish, but it still embodies the self, the passion, and inner struggles. And then last time I asked you guys to go over vocab words. Are you guys ready for me to move on? But we talked about vex, and sagacity, and vehement, and gesticulation, and implore, and mean, and pallid. Um, so bring out your definitions for that, and we'll go over them really, really quick. So a vex is to make someone feel annoyed, frustrated, or worried. Sagacity is the quality of having good judgment. Vehement is showing strong feelings. Gesticulation is a gesture, and usually a dramatic gesture. 
used instead of speaking or to emphasize one's words. To implore is to beg someone, and you'll see that a lot in his writing. And then, mien is a person's look or manner. And lastly, pallid was of a person's face, like a pale face. You'll see that again. But I'm offering extra credit for the end of the unit. Um, if you can use those in a sentence, then you'll get extra credit, but you'll get double extra credit if you can write them in a poem with the similar themes. And we'll go over that in a few class periods, too. Um, so I gave you guys an anticipation guide. Um, what those are is these guides have major ideas and themes from the stories. And so you're just going to mark down what you think about this on the left column that says before the reading. Um, you either will strongly disagree or strongly agree or somewhere in between. So go ahead and do those before we do our poem. For both stories. There's an example on the board, too. Is everyone done? All right, so now I gave you the text on paper um, of the stories we're going to go over. And I'll have you read The Telltale Heart on your own, and then we'll read The Raven together. So I'll give you some time, and whenever you're done, you can just raise your hand or let me know. I'll walk around if you guys have questions, too.